Okay, now that we're through. <laughs> <laughs> Looks a fire monster. Yeah, man. And tacky. Fucking honestly, your bowels must be such a state. <laughs> I feel fine. <laughs> Hey, I'm Matt, and we're here at the 2021 Pink Bike Summer Field Test in Sun Peaks. The full carbon 29 inch wheeled 170 mil travel Kinevo SL is a lightweight e-bike that might win over some of those that are put off by some of the heavier machines out there. Let's talk about that smaller power plant for a second. It has 35 Newton meters of torque with a 320 watt hour battery plus the 160 watt hour range extender. The Kinevo SL is the first lightweight, long travel e-bike from Specialized. It shares the same motor and battery as the Levo SL and features the new Mastermind display. The Mission Control app lets you play with output assist levels and so much more. The motor haptics are always being tweaked to be more organic with the pedal input. With the location of the adjustments on this bike, you can tune the head tube and seat tube angles independently to some degree. The bike ships in the neutral head angle position sitting at 64 degrees, while the chainstay is in the short setting, yielding a 76.5 degree seat tube angle. To reach the slackest 62.5 degree head tube angle, you'll have to use one of the offset head tube cups provided, and then put the chainstay in the low BB setting. This will give you a 76.2 degree seat tube angle. The Kinevo SL is available in four sizes, fitting riders from 157 centimeters to 193 centimeters. This S4 size bike we had on test had a reach of 489 millimeters in the stock configuration. The chainstay length is quickly adjustable. Just pop off the rear wheel, flip the chips at the dropout, and then pick between a 442 or a 447 millimeter chainstay length. The familiar look of the Kinevo SL's six bar suspension design stems from their demo downhill bike and is also shared with the Enduro, basically the non-motorized version of this bike. The small bump compliance, mid-stroke support, and bottom out are controlled separately from the rearward starting axle path with the help of these tension links. This bike gets the full Fox treatment with a factory 170 mm 38 up front and a Float X2 out back. How do they work on the trail? That's what we're gonna talk about next. But the Huck to Flat has claimed yet another victim. That carbon praxis crank arm broke when Jason landed. Now Jason's okay, but we've sent the crank back to Praxis for them to inspect it, and here's what they've got to say about it. All right, we've gone through all the details on Specialized Kinevo SL. It's time to talk about how this relatively lightweight e-bike climbs. Now, when I say lightweight, it's 44.6 pounds with that range extender or 42.2 pounds without it. What does that mean on the trail, Henry? Because some other e-bikes here weigh, I mean, that Norco is 56 pounds. Some of them are 54, 55. Yeah, I mean, this is it's obviously drastically lighter. You know, kind of 20% lighter sort of thing yeah. than a couple of these bikes. This is a really good climber. Yeah. It's, I would say it's you know similar mark to the Yeti. Mm -hmm. There seems to be very, two very distinct flavors of e-bikes. We've got the Norco and the Common Cell, whilst being very capable descenders and offering you know loads of grip. They're probably not quite as punchy or, or snappy mm -hmm. as something like the um, Kinevo or that Yeti. I want to ask you guys about the motor because this definitely gives out less help, it helps you less than the full-size e-bikes. What was that like on the trail, going from riding like something like the Norco, which is all the power, 
you're going up everything, to something like the Kinevo that definitely gives you less help. Yeah. Did you find that a hindrance? Were you making less things? You know, I mean, I think with the Kinevo, it puts itself in actually almost kind of no man's land. Yeah. Because for those of you that ride by yourself, I think it's great. I think it's also really good for people that want to ride with people that aren't are riding non-motorized bikes. Yeah. But compared to the Norco and the Common Sal, you know, it's just not not as grunty. Right. You know, yeah. Especially on fiery climbs. If those if those if your friends want to kick on, yeah. you'll just oh I'll, 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 get, I'll get get a coffee. I'll meet yeah. you there. Right. You know, you got nothing to go with it. Matt, can you speak to some technical climbing and how your approach might be different on this e-bike as opposed to something with more power behind it? Yeah, I would say this one climbed more like a traditional bike in a sense that, yeah, you could actually go maybe down a gear to something a little bit harder to push and do some of those ratcheting moves without the bike kind of taking off on you. The one last thing I want to talk about before we move on from climbing is pedaling efficiency. It matters on all bikes, motors or not, but if we're talking e-bikes, the Kinevo SL, obviously it's going to help you less. So maybe that pedaling efficiency might be more important, Henry? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, this. This goes with very little bob. Yeah. It's got, it's a bit more characterful. It's actually about picking your line. It's it's not about just hitting stuff as fast as possible. It's actually amazing what I found cool with the Yeti and the Specialized was how slow you could get up climbs. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't just like, mm -hmm. charge. You didn't need that momentum you know, yeah, on those things. You could things. actually just go, okay, I've got the grip, I've got the poise and I've got the balance. Now I'm gonna leave it in economy and just get on up. All right, boys, enough about the climbing. I am super interested to hear how you guys got on with this thing on the downhills because it is substantially lighter on the descent. So Matt, is that noticeable on the trail? We're talking you know, more than 10 pounds of weight here. What does that mean on the trail if we were to compare the Norco Range VLT to the Kinevo SL? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of weight differential between these two, but if you wanna talk about a Kinevo to a regular downhill bike. I've definitely ridden downhill bikes that are the same weight bracket, you know, low 40 numbers. And this thing was really, really good. Really planted, really composed. Does it feel like a normal non-motorized bike? Because we have those here too. You guys have been switching back and yes. forth. It definitely doesn't feel like such a boat rank with some of these bikes. Mm -hmm. And I think you really notice that when you're lent. You know, once that, once, although the, the weight is really low in the Kinevo, I think it does help there's just less in general. Mm -hmm. When you're on one of those big bikes that's got, you know, 45, 50, sorry, 55 pounds even, and you're leaning it off the Y axis, that's one of the places you really know the weight. Similarly, when you get up to speed in these bike park trails, you know you're on an e bike because you're just going that much faster. It felt great at speed, but for me, the weight was pretty, pretty noticeable. All right. Let's move on to some suspension talk. Henry, earlier you mentioned that you had some hard bottom outs on this bike. Yeah, I mean, part of the, you know, the nature of us being here is we're testing a lot of bikes. Sometimes we can't spend the week or whatever you want to really fine tune every aspect. Yeah. So we've been going between bikes that both Matt and I have been riding. Mm -hmm. And I think we both felt that we probably, if this was to be our own bike, mm -hmm. we'd probably end up putting a bottom out adjustment space in there. So the good thing is with that Fox shock on that bike, you definitely have the tuning room yes, to definitely. do that, to add a volume spacer in there and get a little bit more ramp up. What about the other end of the travel? This thing has 170 millimeters of rear wheel travel. That's the same as the Norco Range VLT. And Matt, you talked about that bike being kind of stuck to the ground, monster truck, lots of confidence. The Kinevo SL has the same amount of travel. Is it similar? It is similar in that it hugs the ground but it kind of gives you that rewarding feedback. If you push into it, it's light enough and the suspension action just feels lively that you can pick it up and, and be a little bit more playful on the trail, mm -hmm. unweighting over different sections of rock and route. All right, we're gonna close out the descending section with a question for these guys. Full-size e-bike or Kinevo SL, Matt? What are you doing? This is a pretty tough one. Uh, I do do a lot of riding by myself, and although I do enjoy technical challenges climbing uphill, mm -hmm. I don't like just burning time spinning up fire roads. I might go for the halfway weight of the Kinevo SL if I could shell out that much cash for it. All right, fair enough. Henry, full-size e-bike, 55 pounds, or Kinevo SL, 44 pounds? I think ever being the slave to fashion, as yeah. you know, Mike. Yeah, I, I could think uh, it really depends what my friends had. If my friends have fully bikes, 
I would apps I wouldn't go for the Kinevo. I would just feel I'd feel it'd be the same thing that e-bike thing is solving by it's great I think when you've got a couple of people not on e-bikes and some people want some extra assistance and it kind of neutralizes the whole group. But I think you get a problem within it where everyone would be on the super powerful ones and you'd be like, wait for me. Mm -hmm. Oh sorry guy. And it's just like, oh we're here again. This is what it was meant to solve. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, so it sounds like you're gonna lean towards the full powered e-bike then. Unless I had friends. I mean, I've got to get some e-bike and friends first. Yeah, sure. Assuming they all ride Knevos, then I get a Knevo. Okay. So I will do what, what, what the dream situation is. They say, Henry, here's $15,000. Go buy a Knevo. <laughs> oh yeah, sure, I can do that. Let's start with the pluses from you, Matt. Yeah, I mean, this one has the full Fox factory suspension and the Float X2 offers a lot of adjustment with that suspension layout, I think it really blends well with the shock. Another thing we really liked about some of the code RSC specs was that big power up there. And then this one, yeah, it's pretty hard to fault with the spec. Full AXS from SRAM, so the wireless dropper post, the wireless shifting, and the fancy rainbow chain and cassette. I want to point out that on an e-bike full of wires and cables and everything, to be fair, Specialized has done a pretty good job with the packaging on this. Mm -hmm. The other e-bikes have all these little wires and like rubber bands around the handlebars and like it seems pretty chintzy to me. The packaging on this thing, Specialized has done a killer job. Access is also part of that because it takes away cables. Henry, let's talk about some things that we didn't like as much. Yeah, I mean, I <clears throat> absolutely agree with the 220mm rotor on the front. I would love to have seen it on the back as well. The AXS, I mean, you're totally right. Some of the front ends of the e-bikes look like a movie prop from a 1980s movie where they've got like a bomb disposable and there's just wires everywhere. Just yeah. like, I'm just waiting for one of those wires to get pulled out in the crash, <laughs> torn, I get electrocuted. It's not the green wire. Go I on. know. <laughs> Boom! Yeah, it's supposed to be the red one. <laughs> <laughs> but what it means is that it is so much neater. However, that AXS lever didn't really play that well with the matchmaker clamp, which is You're really it. nitpicking here. But, no, but that's, it's not nitpicking because this bike is 15 grand. Yeah. Like if you- There if, are two different paddles. Mm -hmm. Maybe the other paddle works better for you. Maybe it does, but Matt had a similar problem. It's also not a paddle, it's a button. You don't you, need to paddle it, on, you just gotta- Hold on there, sunshine. You said paddle, not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not accountable for you. <laughs> you guys wrote paddle down here. Our test bike is the $15,000 S-Works version. There's basically nothing to upgrade. I don't know about you guys, but I mean, would you change anything spec-wise on this bike? No, I mean, it's absolutely decked. And yeah. it's really well put together. The whole thing is an amazing package. Right, and that does include the range extender battery that goes into the bottle cage. Unfortunately, there's only one bottle cage location on the bike, so it's almost like if you do want to be up there for seven hours, you either have to do it without water or wear a backpack. <laughs> yeah. It's like, do you want more battery or do you want to be hydrated? <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Which is a bit of a bummer, but there is also the Kinevo Expert. That's $11,000 and it comes with non-Kashima suspension, code RS brakes, X01 gearing and aluminum wheels, plus 450 bucks for the range extender if you want it. I mean, I can't justify the S-Works, guys. Yeah, it's quite a lot of cash. And if you didn't want that electronic shifting, I know a lot of people love it. I kind of prefer the mechanical to be honest. So I might go for the expert and then hop up a couple extra things if I had 15K to spend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I and mean, absolutely. I mean, we talk about the Yeti being hyper expensive and it's the entry level Kinevo comes in not that far south. I would find it hard to look past, I mean, if I had to buy one or two of them, there's no way I'm spending 15 grand on a bike. Yeah. But compared to some of the other bikes, you, know, you could get the common sell and have four grand to go on holiday or buy Bitcoin. Yeah. Either or. Yeah, you know, exactly. What, what, what wonderful options. Yeah. All right, on to the pros and cons. Matt, what did you, what did you like about the Kinevo SL? I really liked the adjustable geometry. I know, we went through this phase where we didn't have it and we had a lot of adjustments and now we're trending back on some bikes without any adjustment like we saw in our field test with like the We Are One and a couple others there. But I really appreciate being able to tune uh, the chainstay length for a different rider size and with Specialized's S sizing, yeah, you can tailor the head tube angle as well as the seat tube angle. 
for the weight, this handles really well. Plus that option of the range extender. You kind of have uh, a one bike to do these monster rides. And I can think of a number of them throughout the Sea to Sky corridor that would, you know, just blast up this long fire road, make, make that boring part out of the way quickly, and then just hit the good stuff. That motor noise is annoying. All motors are gonna make noise, but that doesn't mean they're all equal. Okay, question. What would you rather have? Mm -hmm. The motor in the Specialized that has that whiny gear sound, yep. or a Shimano EP8 motor that rattles all the time? What is less annoying? Oh, God. The, the creaking is annoying. Yeah. But I feel there's a lot of noise that gone when you're descending. You could be climbing for 45 minutes and just Yeah. That, that ain't me. Not yeah. at all. Okay. I'd, I'd take the EPA. Okay. You've got one more con for me. Yeah. So naturally we can't review this bike without saying that it did have a technical failure. Yeah. Now that might not happen to you. We might've been really, really unlucky, but we have to say it. For sure. That's a big con. Yeah. Okay, we are almost at the end of the Kinevo SL review, and that means that I gotta put these two guys on the spot. Matt, tell me what kind of rider this bike is best suited for. Well, let me start by saying there's also the Levo SL in Specialized's lineup. That's a little bit smaller travel bike, so somebody who's gonna get out for quick lunch laps, do that kind of short ride, maybe some more cross-country riding, that would probably tailor to them more. This Kinevo is essentially a downhill bike with a little motor. So it'd be really good for, you know, blasting up those fire roads, um, maybe tracks you'd only shuttle with a downhill bike. Mm -hmm. You can do this on the Kinevo SL. Interesting. Henry, what type of terrain is this bike best suited for? I think this makes for a really versatile bike. And yeah. dare I say it, probably the most versatile on test. Really? Why? Yeah. Why? Right, because if, if you can forego keeping up with other people's e-bikes, yeah. which is a big thing, it's a big thing to me by the way, but if you can forego that, yeah. you've got a bike that genuinely has progressive geometry. Yeah. It ticks all the white boxes in that regard. It's going to be great on the descents. It's going to, it's it's kind of, you know, on a technical single track climb, it climbs it with poise and, you know, vigor. It's really, really good in that regard. It can also obviously slog up a fire road. Mm -hmm. It can kind of do everything. And I think, if, like I said, if you can ignore the power of other people's e-bikes, mm -hmm. I think it gives you the most well-rounded bike on the whole test. Interesting. There you go, Specialized Kinevo SL gets the most well-rounded award from Henry. Stay tuned for our e-bike round table where I'm gonna throw a ton of questions at these guys. They're gonna have to pick favorites and least favorites, as well as the Huck to Flat and Impossible Climb videos. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of them, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.